Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our weekly webinar series. My name is Faiza Hashmi. I am the tax director here at Chris Cooper. Today, I have been joined by my colleague, Mahar Abdul, and together we will take you through today's webinar. So the topic of today are the excise, excisable products. So we are discussing which products are targeted by the UAE authorities for excise duty, on which excise duty has been levied, and which are considered as harmful products. So if you have missed any of our previous lectures, specifically the last one where Mahar had discussed, you know, the general provision related to the excise tax law, um, because we will be continuing this series of, of excise tax and discussing more in detail, you know, uh, different aspects relating to it. So if you have missed the last lecture or any of our other lectures, then I would encourage you to visit our YouTube channel. The handle is Chris Cooper. And uh, you can always uh, email us if you have any questions regarding today's webinar or the previous webinar. But it would be good for you to go through it uh, since we will be continuing this topic about excise duty in also in our upcoming webinars as well. So for the topic of today, so let me recap a little bit about what Maha discussed last week, and then we will discuss about specifically about what are the products and what is included in those products, what are considered um, those products for excise tax. So now excise duty is an indirect tax. So uh, like, for example, VAT is an indirect tax, corporate tax is a direct tax. So excise duty, it falls under indirect tax. It is levied on only certain products, like we are keep on mentioning that only certain specified products are the ones where excise duty is being charged by the UAE government. Those are those products which they consider as, you know, being uh, harmful products, be having an adverse effect on the human health or on the environment. So usually governments in the whole of the GCC, they are um, targeting those products which are considered as harmful and they are levying this excise duty on that just to encourage um, that, you know, consumers do not go uh, for those products or to reduce the consumption for those specific products. Uh, excise duty, it is not a transaction-based tax, not like that where you have to pay VAT at, you know, wherever, whenever the transaction is happening. This is paid one time only in the whole chain. So once, uh, for example, the manufacturer would be paying it when they are manufacturing the products or the importer when they're importing the products. So it is paid one time. Um, it is then that becomes the cost of the product. It, it is borne by the ultimate consumer, but it is not uh, added at every stage that excise duty will need to pay, be paid like VAT. So it is paid once when you know the goods are ready for consumption, um, and it it has it has not uh, anything to do with sales. So for let me give you an example. So if it is a, there is a producer who is producing a certain let's say a sweetened beverage, um, so once that beverage is produced. They need to pay excise tax on that, or an importer who is importing a product, they need to pay the excise tax on that. So it doesn't have to do with sales. So even if it's not sold, the product is not sold yet, uh, it's produced or imported, they need to pay the excise duty that is on those products. Um, and then it will be paid one time, like we said. Now, government, uh, like I said, in the whole of the GCC and also elsewhere in the world, they are using this uh, excise duty to reduce the consumption of those harmful products, which are they are considering as harmful. Um, so in one way, this is helping them in reducing the burden on, you know, the public healthcare system. So if you know the, these um, products which are classified, for example, tobacco, the excessive use of these products, they cause, um, you know, harmful uh, effects like, you know, different diseases like cancer, lung cancer. So then that puts a strain on, you know, the public health care system. So one uh, thing about putting the excise duty and you will see, in the later slides that the excise duty, uh, the rates are very high and that is why, because they want to discourage um, the you know uh, public to use these products. So they want to reduce um, the burden on the healthcare system. On the other hand, if you know this doesn't encourage the um, you know consumption, then they will be collecting a lot of excise duty. So the governments in that way are both in the winning situation where they either the consumption of these harmful products will be, will be reduced because you know the consumer will get deterred by such high excise duty and, you know, then help them uh, to have, a, you know, uh, less stress on their public healthcare system, or they will be collecting a lot of uh, excise duty if the consumers still go for these products. So just for example, I think which Mahar shared in the last uh, week slide as well, that if, for example, the, um, the price of water and the price of uh, one of the carbonated or soft drinks, you can say, is both the same. So the consumer has, there's a 50% chance of the consumer going to both, uh, maybe more to the one that they consider is giving them more value or, you know, uh, like soft drinks. 
but uh, just to discourage it, they have introduced this excise duty on, let's say, the carbonated drinks so that the price becomes higher. And now the consumer is going to think twice about it. Should they go for water or should they go for, um, you know, the carbonated drinks? So we had also discussed in our previous slide that, um, you know, there's no threshold like VAT that, uh, okay, so if your taxable supplies are exceeding a certain threshold with like 375,000, which is there for VAT, um, then you have to register. So for excise tax, there is no um, threshold. If you are uh, producing any of the excise goods, you have intention to produce excise goods, you are a stockpiler of those goods or an importer of regular importer of those goods, you need to register yourself within 30 days of when you have this intention or when you have started this production. And uh, only there is one exception for importers. So if somebody is not a regular importer, now who does FTA consider who is not a regular importer? So if somebody is importing more than once in six months, they are considered as regular importer. If somebody is importing once in a year, they are not considered as a regular importer. Um, but they've also said that if you are, uh, you, you know, your import within two years should not be more than three. So if, you know, somebody has four imports, um, during 24 months, then they will be also considered regular importers. So one of importers, they do not need to register. They can pay the you know uh, um, uh, excise duty on the import uh, without registering. But otherwise, if you are considered a regular importer who is importing more than once in six months or more than four times in two years, then you need to register as well. A producer who is producing excise goods, they need to register. Um, stockpilers and also need to register. Now, um, we have also in this uh, diagram uh, told you when is the time for these particular people to pay this excise tax. So when the goods are ready for the consumption, when they're released for free consumption in the UAE means they're not in any designated area. So then an importer of the excise could they need to pay this excise duty at the time of import. Um, producer or manufacturer, they will need to pay it at the time of production, stockpiler. Uh, date of when they acquired the goods, whether, you know, excise duty is not paid or if a new product has become subject to excise tax and, you know, the, or an effective date of law, if a new law comes out, whichever is later. And for the uh, warehouse keeper, whenever the product leaves the designated zone. So, uh, importer, they, in the later slides, uh, in our later webinars, we will be discussing the different kind of declarations that, that need to be made by an importer or a producer or a stockpiler and, you know, when when they have to pay this excise duty. So, uh, like, for example, for importer, they need to fill an import, uh, import declaration. Producer has to do a production declaration. Stockpiler has to do a stockpiler declaration. So, what is the time to do? And for, you know, for like for import, they need to do it for each import for production. They need to do it once a month. So, all this we will discuss in our, uh, you know, later webinars. So, we can discuss excise duty more in detail. But here I will just summarize that there is no threshold for the um, excise duty registration. And anybody who is producing or a stockpiler or a regular importer, they need to register and pay this excise duty. So now if you have identified if your products, the one that you are manufacturing or importing, you need to first see that if they are those that are subject to excise tax, then you need to determine the appropriate category so that you could know that what is the excise duty on it. So, for example, different categories have different excise duty rates. You need to categorize them properly uh, so that, you know, the base price and excise duty has been properly uh, calculated on that. Now, the products which are being considered as harmful by the UAE authorities, they are like carbonated drinks, energy drinks, sweetened beverages, tobacco products, smoking devices, any liquids that are used in the uh, smoking uh, devices, so they are subject to excise duty. So I think we discussed this table in last week's webinar also. So just to give you an example, there are different rates, like I mentioned, for different categories. At the moment in UAE, these are the products that are considered for excise duty, excisable products. So uh, in Saudi Arabia, it's also the same products, but in the in the Middle East region, uh, some products are being considered uh, for excise duty, others not, but more, mainly they are um, you know, around this range that carbonated drinks, energy drinks, or tobacco-related uh, drinks are being the ones considered for excise duty. Um, now, the rate that is given for the UAE at the moment for carbonated drinks and sweetened drinks is 50%. And for energy drinks, uh, tobacco, tobacco, um, the electronic smoking devices or the liquid which is used, that is being given as 100%. So usually the products are more harmful that the UAE authorities are considering the products they are given a more higher excise duty rate uh, than the others. 
So in today's webinar, we wanted to concentrate on to make you understand that what are energy drinks, what is, you know, uh, included in uh, tobacco, tobacco products, or what is carbonated drinks, so that you can classify the products correctly in the correct category, because that is very important so that you know what excise duty rate to pay. So the first category, uh, the tobacco and tobacco products. So tobacco basically refers to a tobacco plant, the leaves of which are dried and processed for smoking, chewing, and stuffing is usually what is happening in um, in UAE. This tobacco is uh, at the moment is not encouraged as well. Um, but uh, the definition, exact definition of tobacco, tobacco products for excise tax purpose is any product which will fall under Schedule 24 of the GCC Common Custom Tariff. Now, the GCC Common Custom Tariff is where the custom duties are basically being also laid down. And so uh, any product which is being considered as tobacco or tobacco products in that uh, GCC Common Custom Tariff in Schedule 24 will also be considered the same for excise duty purposes. Some of the examples that I've mentioned here, which is not an exhaustive list, you need to look at Schedule 24 to, of the GCC Custom Tariff to see the complete list. But uh, like chewing tobacco, cigars, cigarettes, cigarette rag, cigarello, expanded tobacco, hand rolling tobacco, herbal smoking products, reconstituted tobacco sheets. Now, all these are, are examples of the tobacco products. But yes, you can uh, look at Schedule 24 of the GCC Custom, uh, Common Custom Tariff to see what is the exhaustive list. A list. And this tobacco product also it includes the electronic uh, smoking um, you know, devices. <clears throat> so electronic smoking devices and tools, they're also being considered for uh, excise uh, tax. So this were, these products were added later on. I think initially they used to be only tobacco and tobacco products. But now these electronic smoking devices and the liquid which are used in these devices are also considered for the excise duty purposes. And electronic smoking devices, again, they include all the electronic smoking uh, devices, whether they are containing nicotine or tobacco or not. Uh, and again, which are classified in the customs HS codes as being uh, an electronic smoking device or tool. So for the liquid as well. So if they're being classified as liquid for this in the HS custom code, um, then they are also for the excise tax purposes. Um, and examples you can take for the electronic smoking devices like pipes, hookah, uh, electronic cigarettes, for liquids like the vaping li liquids. So now coming to the drinks, so we have different categories, carbonated drinks, energy drinks, sweetened drinks. So carbonated drinks basically will include all aerated beverages except unflavored aerated water. So unflavored aerated water is sparkling water, so which is being widely uh, sold also. That is not uh, considered as carbonated drink, but if it is flavored, if it is any flavored water, uh, sparkling water, then it will be considered also as a carbonated drink. Uh, now, this carbonated thing, it doesn't need to be only in liquid form. It can be in a concentrate or a powder form or gel form um, or anything that can be transformed into an aerated beverage that would be considered as the uh, carbonated drinks. Now, this usually this aerated beverage, they contain carbon dioxide gas, which creates the bubbles and the fizziness, which you see in your uh, Coke or Pepsi or the sodas, basically. So they include all of these things, carbonated soft drinks. They do not include... Uh, anything that contains alcohol, so that would not be part of the carbonated drinks. Now, we have talked about it could be in liquid form, it could be in a concentrate form, gel form. So now when there it, is, it is in a concentrate form uh, and it is at the point of retail, then, you know, assembled into a liquid form by the retailer. So in that case, it is not taxed twice. Like we said, that excise duty is only, you know, uh, paid once. So if the excise duty is already being paid, then again, at the point of retail, uh, that uh, product, that concentrate where excise duty already being paid, that will not, uh, you know, the retailer will not have to pay again excise duty uh, when it is made into a liquid form. Um, so, uh, the I guess the two conditions would be that first, the tax has already been paid on that excise duty, and that it is uh, only capable of being made when it is mixed with the aerated agent at the point of retail sale. So in this case, basically the manufacturer, you can say, or the importer, they would have paid the excise duty. So this retailer, they don't need to register or pay the excise duty in this case. Now coming to energy drinks. Energy drinks, they're very popular in UAE at the moment. The 
energy drinks we would define it as uh, any beverage that is either marketed or sold as an energy drink so a lot of time energy drink is marketed and sold as an energy drink. you can see it on their uh, logo uh, in on their packaging um, and it contains uh, stimulant substances which is you know provide some mental or physical stimulation so more energy boost you can say uh, or more stimulus uh, these substances they usually include caffeine taurine ginseng or rana this is not exhaustive list again but this is what usually it contains example is red bull monster energy rockstar energy now energy drink also includes uh, not only the beverage just like the uh, that we discussed with the carbonated drink but also concentrates powders gel or any extract that is intended to be made into energy drinks and they do not include drinks containing alcohol just like uh, the carbonated drinks and the same as carbonated drinks if the concentrate has already been excise duty has already been paid on the concentrate by the importer or by uh, the manufacturer then again the retailer they do not uh, at that time need to pay this excise duty has already been paid uh, because it's only being mixed at that time uh, into the liquid form and uh, so recent studies of the Eurometer have indicated that having such a high rate now if you see in the drinks energy drinks have a higher rate than carbonated drinks and sweetened drinks so it has 100 percent excise duty as opposed to 50 percent double of that so it has led to a decrease in the overall sales in the uae of the energy drinks because energy drinks they are considered more harmful than uh, the sweetened drinks or the carbonated drinks by the uae government so sweetened drink category now this is those products which include sugars or sweeteners uh, and they can be again in the form of beverages or liquid, concentrate, powder, extract, or any product that can be converted into a drink. Sugar, when we say uh, sugar, then it means that uh, anything under standard 148 of GCC standardization organization under the heading sugar, whatever is included there, is included the same for excise tax purpose as well. Um, now, some examples uh, from that I can give you is like white sugar, soft white sugar, powdered sugar. So it will be mentioned this way, the soft brown sugar, glucose syrup. Uh, when you go to standard 148, you will see that these are mentioned um, in this in the way in this category. So those which are mentioned there to be sugar, they will be considered as sugar for excise tax purpose. And the sweetened drinks which include the, this sugar in the you know ingredients, they will be considered as sweetened drink and then you know, excise tax need to be paid on them. Um, so those drinks that do not have uh, the sugar, but they have sweeteners in them, uh, like, you know, the diet drinks, which don't have sugar, but they have sweeteners instead. So any sweetener under the standard 995 of the GCC standardization organization, under the heading sweetener permitted in food, if it falls under that, uh, in one of the list of the ingredients, it will be considered as sweetened drinks. So some of the examples we can take is sect sectorine, um, aspartame, sorbitol, neotame, any other such uh, things that are mostly used in the diet drinks. So you will see in the diet energy drinks or the diet, you know, carbonated sweetened drinks, these kind of things are mentioned there. Now, what the sweetened drinks do not include a certain exclusion given under the law. They are those daily to drink beverages that have, you know, milk content. So if the milk content is 75% at least, then they will not be, if they're more, if they're 75 or more, then they will not be considered as sweetened drinks. So if they are milk substitutes also, uh, which are more than 75%, then it will not be considered. Baby formulas are not considered as sweetened drinks. Um, beverages that are consumed for special dietary uses or for special medical purposes. So for example, in hospitals, you will see a lot of time insure is given um, you know, to the patient. So those kind of drinks which are given for special medical purposes, again, they need to be uh, determined as such under standard 1366 of the GCC standard, standardization organization. The heading would be general requirement for handling of food or for special purpose. So all these are specifically mentioned there. Uh, so if there's part of that, then you know they will not be considered as sweetening because they are not considered harmful. Uh, so they are not the ones that the UAE government wants to tax. So these are some of the drinks which are going to be excluded. So if you are producing a drink and you want to know if they are considered as sizable goods or not, you need to see what are the ingredients. So, for example, if what if the sugar is there, as per how we discussed in our previous slide, um, that if the sugar under standard 148 is in the list of ingredients, or sweetener under standard 995, or they don't have, uh, you know, they have less than 75 milk content, or they're not part of uh, these special dietary um, 
substances or you know considered as baby uh, food then they will be considered as sweetened drink and also as excisable goods for the UAE purposes now similar to what we discussed for carbonated or energy drinks again if the concentrate is already uh, being you know taxed before at the time when the importer imported it or manufacturer produced the concentrate so then it will not again be subject to excise duty at the point of retail. Again, we keep on reiterating excise duty is paid only once. Also, although it's borne by the consumer because it's part of the price, of the shelf price, but it is paid only at one time, um, which is the time when the products are being produced or imported or, you know, stockpiled. Um, again, sweetened drink, just like concentrate, uh, just like carbonated and energy drink, they do not include any beverages that contain alcohol. So for all three of these categories, if it contains alcohol, they will not be uh, considered as a category of sweetened drink or carbonated drink or energy drink. Now, sometimes it could be now you have, um, you know, identified your product that you think that they are, you know, one of these categories of the beverages, but you are not exactly sure of what to classify it as because it's important because the excise duty rate is different to you for you to be able to classify it. So the law is said that then you need to look at, uh, to judge that what is this product, you need to look at what is the marketing being used. So how is the company, you know, marketing it? Is, are they marketing as, as an energy drink? What is the label is saying? What the packaging is saying? That is it going to give you some extra, you know, uh, an increased level of energy or some physical ability or stamina? Um, or, you know, it's talking about any mental or physical benefits. So those things can help you identify if it's an energy drink or a carbonated drink because energy drink, carbonated drink sometimes are very similar. So it is uh, difficult to uh, to do that. Or you can say that maybe the marketing we use is nothing to do with increased physical ability or mental, um, you know, benefits, but it is only talking about taste. So then it might be a carbonated drink. So uh, absence of, you know, those things can also identify what product it is or if it is, uh, you know, very uh, um, using in their campaigns or in their, you know, websites, they're talking about, um, you know, physical benefits or increased ability or energy in a person after consuming their products. So then it would indicate that it is in an energy drink and then you have to classify it as such. Now, if the product is meeting, if then you're not able to classify even after that criteria, then uh, what the law says is that you need to classify it as the product which has a higher excise duty. So if there's any confusion between sweetened drink, carbonated drink, or energy drink, then you need to classify it as energy drink. If, for example, uh, they've said that if it is in the category of carbonated drink or uh, sweetened drink, which both have the same rate, 50%, then in that case, they have said that it should be classified as a carbonated drink. So that has been mentioned specifically in the law. Otherwise, whichever the product has a higher excise duty rate, like energy drink, it should be uh, categorized as that uh, if there is any confusion or if they, it is fitting multiple excise good categories. Now, I think in the last seminar and also webinar, uh, Mahara talked about the excise good list. So, um, you know, that whenever excise tax is paid, it is paid on the higher of whatever uh, price is mentioned in the FTS excise good list or the designated retail sale price or so whichever is high need to be paid. So when we're talking about this excise good list, uh, so I wanted to just mention here that this excise good list, it is available on the MRA text portal. So if you go to other services in the portal, it is a very detailed list. It has all the goods and what it tells you is the all the information about the product, what is the GTN of the product, what is HS code of the product, the description of the product, uh, what brand it is, what you know excise prices for that product. So you can search it by brand, by name by GTIN any way you want it. So you can search any product to see that if those products which um, you know are uh, already available or the price of it is available or not. Why this is important is that maybe in our future webinar, we will talk a bit more about brand sync. Here I will touch it a little bit because we're talking about products. So today we discussed that what is carbonated products or what is energy drinks, what is sweetened drinks, what is tobacco. But if you want to register any product, a new product, which is not there already in the excise good list, so you need to do it through this bank sing, sing portal. So they have collaborated with FTA and FTA, uh, you need to go to their website, which is www.bankseng.com. They're in the FTA portion. Uh, you need to log in and you need to register your product. Now, if you do not have this uh, login, you can also go through this uh, MRTEX portal. When you go to excise code list, 
you can go to new request, which can be seen in the screen. And once uh, you click on that, it will take you to the banking uh, portal as well to register. And in this portal, uh, this portal maintains a portfolio of the products. So basically all the products of the company which they are importing or producing, it will be coming here. Um, it is a very um, you know detailed description of those products. So um, we'll talk about more in our future webinars. But here I would like to mention that uh, this, when you are registering a new product, you need to put in a very detailed description about the product, where was it manufactured, what are the ingredients. Uh, each ingredient has to be mentioned, nutritional value has to be mentioned, uh, retailer receipts need to be put in so that, you know, you know, uh, we have to see that the price has to be higher of what is the designated price or uh, which is on the FTX size good list. Uh, if it's a new product, then a price needs to go in the image of the product is there so we need to put in the pictures of the product from all angles where you can identify the products and also declarations need to be put in nutritional value needs to be put in uh, what is the category of the product so it's a very like detailed um, description and portfolio of the product that needs to be maintained here in the branching so this is how you can add any new product which is not already there in this existing excise good list because it is very important for the product to be in this list because when you are filing your excise tax return um, and for that when you are doing the importer declaration or production declaration, it automatically picks up the products from this excise good list and it will also display the price which is there on the excise good list. So you need to, if your price is designated detail, um, selling price is higher, you need to put that in at the time of, you know, when you are filing the production declaration or the import declaration but the basic price it will pick up from the excise good list. So very important for your product to be there. So if it's a new product, it's not there, or it's a new product being imported in the UAE who nobody else has imported before, then you need to make sure that you add it in this uh, excise good list before you are doing your declaration because otherwise you will not be able to and uh, to use this banks and portal uh, to do that. So I will now hand it over to Mahar, uh, who will just recap on the seminar uh, on and the summary. So Mar, you can take it from here. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much. And uh, I think uh, Faiza, thank you very much. Faiza has explained already everything and what we were supposed to discuss today, she has already explained. But whatever we have discussed till now regarding the excise duty, I will be just for, uh, giving you over you just a couple of minutes, one or two minutes. And uh, then we'll be going to your question and answer session. Whatever we have discussed till now regarding the excise duty, excise duty, duty applicable by the authority on the harmful products. What is the purpose? The purpose of implementing excise duty is to control the utilization of the harmful products. In case you are using it, then you need to pay premium to the government. And that will be you, the money that you are paying to the government for in the form of excise duty, that money will be consumed for the public welfare. Which persons are subject to excise tax? We have already discussed four persons are subject to excise tax. Importers of excisable goods, manufacturer of excisable goods, stockpilers of excisable goods, and the fourth one is the warehouse keeper of the excisable goods. These four parties are subject to excise. Other than this, none of the person is subject to excise duty. If these four parties are only subject to excise duty, if these parties are dealing in the excisable goods. So what stage tax is applicable? What stage, okay, on which, at what stage excise tax is applicable? Excise tax is applicable, we have already discussed, when the goods are free for circulation, the excise tax is applicable. If the importer is importing the goods till the goods are in the designated zone, goods are not free for circulation. And whenever the goods are being cleared from the designated zone, goods are free for circulation. At that time, excise duty is applicable. You will be required to submit a declaration. Whenever the goods are being manufactured by the manufacturer, it is being assumed that the goods are for, available for free circulation. Excise duty is applicable. When the warehouse keeper, goods are in the warehouse, and this is some sort of warehouse keeper, then this is specific designated zone. This warehouse can be on the mainland as well. You need to take approval from the FTA. Whenever the goods are being released from this designated zone, a specific zone, then these it will be assumed that the goods are available for free circulation and excise duty will be applicable. 
For the stock piler, we'll discuss the stage of application of the excise duty at three stages. Any one of them might be when the goods are available, when at the time of acquisition of the goods, or at the time of the effective date of the excise law, excise duty will be applicable. Then we'll discuss which products are subject to excise duty. Faiza, she has already explained in detail what are the products that are subject to excise duty as given in the law these are the carbonated drinks energy drinks tobacco tobacco products uh, devices that have been used for smoking purposes liquid liquid that is being used inside the smoking devices then these are the energy products and sweetening products these products are subject to excise duty what is the excise tax rate Excise tax rates on the carbonated drinks and sweetened drinks are 50%. Rest on the all excisable product, the excise rate is 100%. Keep in mind, sparkling water and alcohol, these are not excisable product. It will not be subject to excise duty. Excise price. This is our topic that we'll be discussing in detail in our next webinar. In our first webinar, we'll discuss the two crucial things. First is what are the products that are subject to excise duty? Second, what is the excise tax base, excise tax price on which excise duty would be applicable? Excise tax price, we will have a separate coming webinar on the excise tax price. We'll be ascertaining the value on which price excise duty is applicable. Uh, principally, and I, I will give you an overview. This is the higher of the amount ascertained by the F, F, Federal Tax Authority, I higher of the retail price, whichever is higher how to calculate the retail price, how to register the product. This all will be discussing in our coming webinars. Excise tax rate we have already discussed, just I mentioned as well, 50% or 100%. Two excisable products, 50%, carbonated drinks and sweetened beverages. Other than this, all excisable products are subject to excise duty at 100%. Now, if you are subject to excise duty, what are your compliance requirements? In the compliance requirement we'll discuss, you need to get and get yourself registered. You know, threshold for registration, like the VAT, the timeline for registration is there. I think we is on 30 days. For the time, you have decided to import the goods, manufacture the goods, or become a stockholder, whatever the requirements is. Then you need to apply the excise duty. You need to submit the return based upon the declaration that you've already submitted. These declarations will be auto-populated in your excise duty return. And excise tax return needs to be submitted within 15 days from the end of the relevant excise period. And usually the excise period is one month. The concept of digital STEM system, we have already discussed. We will have one more webinar on this. What is digital STEM system? Objective of the digital STEM system is basically to control the authenticity of the excisable products and to monitor or to track the excisable products. Government has already introduced the digital STEM system. We will look on this in detail in our coming webinars. Record keeping requirement is there as well. So this is the summary of excise duty whatever we have excise duty webinar discussions that we have till now just wait our coming webinar for the excise tax price then we'll be discussing on the record keeping requirement along with the return submission requirement and more important thing digital stem system might we'll be discussing some case scenarios as well regarding the excise duty we need to i think we will have one three two to three more webinars on the excise duty Thank you very much from our side. This is over from our side. And if you have any question, you are most welcome. I think no question is there. Even if you have any query, you can drop us an email at info at .com. We are always here to help you, to support you, just to keep you on compliant. You need to keep you on track so that you need to focus on your core businesses. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for being with us. Faiza, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching the video. Click on the bell and subscribe to the YouTube channel.